underwater. It's an alien environment. A world where things are not as they seem. Where sight and sound are distorted. Where gravity is suspended and we can fly. This is a world where much of life is streamlined for movement. At best, we are only brief visitors here. Water is 800 times more dense than air, and we are obliged to move differently, to test ourselves and to observe, without disturbing, the choreography of the living reef. It's impossible here to judge by appearance. Flowers in a breeze are actually tiny animals, connected in a coral colony. We too are more closely connected here and stick together, witnesses in this Eden, which is more a jungle than a garden. Sophisticated equipment allows us to visit this exotic place, but each breath reminds us we are in another world. Landscapes of corals are here to be explored, but the time we have underwater is limited. Each of us sees something different on the reef, but some of us feel even more at home here, where there is immunity from gravity, and we swim in a living kaleidoscope. But soon we return to air and sun and to Alcyon, our prototype windship, with its experimental turbo sails designed to save fuel. This will be home base for me and our crew and gateway to the paradise below our ship. I'm Jean-Michel Cousteau. Join us on a Cousteau Society special report here in Fiji with some very special people. The first to explore underwater with true freedom of movement was my father, Jacques Cousteau. Millions of people now hear his name and think of his adventures underwater and his commitment to protect and preserve the planet. But few people know that my father's life was forever changed by a nearly fatal accident that left him broken and paralyzed. It was a frightening beginning to a fabulous story. Gilles, tell me what happened. Oh, Jean-Michel, it's a very old story. I was just coming out of the French Naval Academy, and I uh, went to the flying school because I wanted to be a Navy flyer. When I had a terrible automobile accident, and I almost lost my life, uh, I got my two arms uh, damaged, this one broken in several places, the other one paralyzed. Uh, and then I went, uh, I found myself in a hospital bed with the right arm paralyzed, left arm operated and in a plaster, an infection coming and installing itself in my left arm and the doctor looking at it and saying, uh, it would be safe to amputate you. And I said, no way, I don't want to, I already have a paralyzed arm on the other way, I don't want to lose my, both my arms. I prefer to take the risk. So he thought I was crazy, but it worked. So my story is very simple. I wanted to be a flyer, and I became a diver. So this accident changed completely my life. And uh, I am very lucky because I find underwater about the same kind of feelings that pilots uh, feel in, uh, in the air. Uh, and I experienced this wonderful uh, weightlessness that divers have. My father never became a pilot, but his dreams of flying came true underwater, where he was free from gravity. Now millions of divers find freedom below the surface, including the divers we're about to meet. 
We're going to escape with them to the reefs of Fiji to explore the undersea world my father first entered 50 years ago and to celebrate diving. The people now arriving here at Savu Savu Airport are from six different countries. They will explore together Fiji's second largest island, Vanua Levu. These travelers arrive with more than the usual equipment. All of them have suffered some loss of physical abilities, which limits their movements or confines them to wheelchairs. Through accident or illness, they must contend with ordinary events in extraordinary ways. Trained by organizations like the Handicap Scuba Association, they are all experienced divers. They arrive well prepared and with spare parts. For this group especially, a vacation is more than getting away from the office or out of town. Their vacation is an escape from gravity itself. They are part of an international program designed for people with permanent disabilities. They travel far from home, but the greatest distance traveled is the inner journey each of them has already taken. They are soon to explore some of the most beautiful dive spots in Fiji, a nation where only 3% of its territory is above water. Many of them never expected to be here. For some, their lives were changed by a sudden traumatic accident. In the US alone, there is one disabling spinal cord injury every hour. The difference between a wheelchair and walking is perhaps only a brief moment of chance. These divers have crossed the equator and the international dateline to get here. Now a warm sea is before them. But the routine of preparation still takes over packing dive bags, loading equipment, and each other. The hard work of diving is shared, and no one is alone. Each diver is matched with a specially trained instructor, and as buddies, they share a close bond. On land, all this effort seems like a lot of trouble for just a brief time underwater. For everyone, though, it's an exercise in teamwork that expands personal limits. These divers, however, are about to leave many of their limits behind. some anxiety of the unknown. They are about to dive in the underwater equivalent of the tropical rainforest. These last moments before diving are critical. Spirits run high, but gearing up is hard work. A wetsuit begins the transformation because the body loses heat 25 times faster in water. To fly underwater requires, ironically, not wings, but lead weights which equalize the buoyancy of water and wetsuit. These divers have more at stake in entering the sea, but they also have more to gain. In their everyday lives, gravity imposes limits on their movements, but underwater, they will be weightless and able to maneuver almost freely. Countdown to a different world.
The barrier is broken. We leave the familiar behind as we begin a slow descent. Even at only 33 feet below, we are under twice as much pressure. So buoyancy is fine-tuned and final checks on equipment are required. I don't know what to expect, but I'm anxious to join these new friends. Although coral reefs grow only one centimeter per year, they are the largest structures made by any living thing. Yet it is always the details that amaze me. Like this lionfish with venomous fins, a fish that walks on deadly stilts. The structure of the reef grows to become this underwater metropolis, a city populated with characters like this yellow damselfish. The white film of her eggs, wrapped around wire-like coral, is the focus for this damsel in distress. But I'm the one in need of rescue. I shake a finger, a meaningless human scolding to this fish, which has no fear of me, a bubble-blowing monster. An intruder is an intruder to a creature so committed to protecting its own future generation. This fish has no need of my company, and I leave, thinking of all divers who also overcome the odds to do what they do. A few years ago, no one believed that someone with a physical disability could ever scuba dive. But careful and hard training, sound health and determination have enabled these divers not only to dive, but to set certain standards for sane behavior and for close but benign observation underwater. Diver Julie Perez knows. I'm doing something that most people are afraid to do. And I'm successfully doing it, and I'm doing it with, with other people. It's, there's a lot of things I can't do, but I can dive, and that's a lot. <laughs> they are in close communication with their buddies. They achieve neutral buoyancy and move through the water with minimum effort, in slow motion liberty, aware of what's around them and of each other. Their physical limitations are compensated here in this three-dimensional gymnasium where everyone plays. Instructor Denise Dowd has seen what diving can do. I think what's um, exciting about working with the disabled is seeing people going beyond their disabilities and out there challenging things that a lot of able-bodied people are afraid to try. Uh, scuba diving, I think, is a, a difficult sport for a lot of people and for someone who's disabled. To be out there scuba diving and doing as well, or even better than an able-bodied person, can be a real ego builder, uh, building self-confidence and, and self-esteem. Other divers share their experience. Edison Passafaro from Brazil. Ah, eu me sinto super bem. 
Super legal em, em poder mergulhar hoje. I feel fine. Como eu te falei, é uma coisa... It's wonderful in being able to dive now. It's an additional motivation, a sensation of freedom. Something that's stimulating to discover super interesting things. A new way of being able to face life. Terry Luxenberger. I had polio when I was four years old, and when I got into my late 20s, uh, the HSA Handicap Scuba Association uh, started their program, and instantly I was attracted to it, and I haven't left it since. On land, there's gravity, and it restricts your movements, and it really prevents you from being yourself in a lot of, in a lot of physical ways. When you're in the water, there is no gravity. There's no feeling of being exhausted or worn out, and you can see what Mother Nature has to offer. Mother Nature offers surprises, like clownfish living in the tentacles of an anemone, an animal that captures and kills other fish. Yet these clownfish make it their home. The anemone protects the clownfish, and the clownfish brings food to the anemone in a symbiotic relationship called mutualism, where both benefit linked for a lifetime to a small patch of the reef. Unlike these fish, we are free to wander, to explore. Diver Michel Galler explains it for herself. Diving has changed my life in that it got me back into the water, and it has inspired me to travel to places I probably wouldn't have traveled. It's just um, broadened my horizons. Diving on the reef is like arriving in a crowded city. Creatures moving, interacting, connected in earnest lives. Each dive is an exercise in making connections. Few organisms are alone. Corals survive in colonies. The mandate to cooperate is widespread. Jim Gattiker, the president of the Handicap Scuba Association, knows. When I realized that people with disabilities more severe than mine could do uh, scuba diving and got involved in actually training people, it just changed my life completely. My disability became something that I possessed. I have a disability rather than I am disabled. Um, as a result of that, uh, I was, it just motivated me to, to pass this along to other people. Through such efforts, Handicapped divers and instructors now explore underwater throughout the world, and their lives have been forever changed. Sakuko Kato tells of her experience. I am touched by the kindness and sympathy of able-bodied people in a way that I was not prior to my disability. And the ocean is the only place where you can see these beautiful fish and different corals. For me, as opposed to being on land, being in the sea is really like being in a dream. The reef we visit is not a dream, but it is fragile. Coral reefs cover a minuscule two-tenths of one percent of the world's oceans, but they contain its most abundant and diverse life. We are actually swimming through a liquid laboratory, full of age-old experiments that are forever new. In the 50 years since my father first entered the sea, we've barely begun to understand the true nature of what we encounter, such as these plate-like corals, animals which must capture sunlight for the tiny plants that live within their tissues. Now we, too, are part of the experiment, exploring, probing, and learning that it's perhaps not nature we need to control, but ourselves. It's back to another reality, 
and the six different languages of our group. But it doesn't matter. Here, in our own mini United Nations, the language of diplomacy is laughter. <laughs> Great. How do you say it in Russian? <laughs> in the bright sunshine of a Fijian afternoon, we share a simple but powerful bond. Love for the sea. The freedom of being underwater carries over to the rest of our daily lives, as diver Pavel de Lopov from Moscow describes. I was born near the Black Sea in the Ukraine. I was diving before my injury, but after my injury, some things changed. I can't run, but I can swim on and below water just as well, or maybe even better than the others. From early childhood, I loved swimming underwater. Memories of these personal moments of freedom will live on. In Fiji, the villagers and the coral reefs are closely connected. Each village grants or refuses permission to dive its reefs. So we visit Nandi village to say thank you and to share our different points of view. So how are we doing today? Okay. You're looking forward to your dinner? What's your name? The man who did it all. Hey, would you mind just taking a couple for me also? As with all great trips, this one is over too soon. And like tourists, these divers want to capture one last image before leaving. The welcoming waters of Fiji remain vivid in my memory of this trip, where, for a brief moment, we abandoned gravity, and, as in my father's dream, we flew in freedom. <laughs> 